Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for part two of the Damascus pattern welded steel Kephart bushcraft blade. So it's fully heat treated at this point. Pulled it out of a couple of tempering cycles. We're ready to finish grind this and continue the process. So just checking where the edge is and where it needs to be and we'll get this thing ground out. This is a basically a saber grind, which is basically a flat grind but not a full flat grind, if that makes sense. There's a portion at the top of the blade that is the thickness of the spine. Now it does have that distal taper in it that we put in in the beginning of the process, so that all plays into the, uh, the overall grind of the blade as well. Now for the hand sanding process, to take it up to the grit we need before etching it in the ferric chloride, have a little outdoor sanding station here, rather warm in the shop the last couple of days. So it's kind of nice to get a little, a little bit of air. I'm starting out with uh, 320 grit on this blade, take out the grinder marks and then I'll move up to 600 grit and finally 1000 grit before etching. So if you watch the channel much you know that I'm a bit of a coffee fan and therefore also kind of a coffee mug fan. My mom got this one for me for my birthday, so thanks, Mom. And uh, enjoying some espresso bean whilst sanding the blade here. This is the 1000 grit sandpaper, and you can see it looks pretty shiny. The finish that you have on the blade prior to etching it in the acid is what you're going to have after etching it in the acid. So that's something to keep in mind. It depends on the layer count you have and different things like that. but. You need to have a good finish on your blade before you etch it. So just putting the, the logo in here on my blade using the electrical etching process. And I actually did a video on that about a week ago, I think. So if you're interested in how that works, you can check that video out. And now to mix up some fresh ferric chloride. You'll notice how diluted the mixture really is, and of course always add acid to water, not the other way around. But it does not take a strong mixture of acid for the etching process. In fact, a strong mixture will give you a poor etch. Basically you want something that will easily etch the high carbon steel, but mostly, if not almost completely, leave the nickel steel alone. And if it's too strong, it won't do that. So there you have it, pulls that pattern out basically immediately and uh, is able to get the etching done in just two, two rounds there, cleaning it off in between with that nice fresh ferric chloride. Here I am putting the primary bevel on the blade and that's kind of a delicate process, putting that initial angle in there to sharpen it. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to do a edge retention cutting test on the blade. I don't typically put an edge on the blade at this stage of the game. Usually it's the very last thing I do. So this is my wet stone or oil stone as it were. And just refining that primary bevel right there. Taking the burr from the grinder off and uh, smoothing it up and then I'll get it on the Arkansas stone once I have that well established on the whetstone. The, the, Arkansas, the Arkansas stone is close to honing. I, you could really call it that I think and it puts a nice edge on it and I follow it by stropping which is the final step here. Stropping is something that is recommended for blades that are going to be used for carving wood or working wood especially because at the microscopic level when you take your edge to a sharpening stone it's very rough and a lot of unsupported burrs and that kind of thing so it's not as strong but if you take it to the strop and uh, polish it down to one mono edge it's much stronger cuts better in the wood and lasts longer so you can see here on our 2x4 it's cutting in very nicely like a fine Japanese chisel or something. And the only difficulty I'm having at all, I'm having at all is the fact that the blade is 
as narrow as it is and I can't reach down into the 2x4 past the depth of the blade, which you would have that issue anyway. Anyway, chopping through the 2x4, do that a couple times here. Even though the cap art isn't designed per se for batoning, I like to be able to test my blades, test my knives. Alright, so that's twice through. Let's just uh, check that real quick here. Still shaves quite nicely. Good deal. Alright. And then we'll go ahead and take it through one more time just for fun. And see if it shaves after the third time through. And it does. Still shaved. As expected. Still sharp. Alright, well, I'm going to call that uh, good for now. I'm putting desert ironwood handle scales on this blade. And since they're all in blocks, I need to slice them down into something that will work for handle scales. I, I put a, a temporary but serviceable guide on, on my bandsaw in order to do that. Works pretty well. I like desert ironwood. It's very durable and a lot of times you can get a piece with some nice figuring or grain in it and depending on what you purchase and this one's got some nice character to it. Getting the backs or insides of the handle scales flat so they match up to the tang without gaps. That's just a matter of grinding them flat, getting the rough bandsaw marks off of them. Here I'm just marking where the tang goes on the outside of the scales and this does a few things. It lets me know what the outside of the scale is, uh, which side goes where, and just makes everything easier in the process as to follow. And then of course I'm using the tang itself as the template or jig, if you will, to drill the holes. And you'll notice I'm using my drill press without a stop or a clamp and I'm comfortable doing that in my shop with this particular drill press. It will stall out easily as long as you hang on to whatever you're drilling. Of course, I'm not saying this is how you should do it, but it works for me. So get the, get the job done here. Reasonable level of safety. Countersinking the holes here for the bolt, uh, the, the nut on the bolts that are going to hold these handle skills onto the tang. And that's a special countersink that you buy just for the bolts you're using. And it makes everything much easier. Making sure the scales are flat on the inside, taking off the, the burr of the little chips on the inside of the hole from drilling it. Now I'm going to shape the front of the handle scales, the portion of the knife handle that cannot be shaped after it's been attached to the knife without potentially marring up, almost certainly I should say, marring up the ricasso area of the blade. There's no way to get to it unless you do it beforehand. And so getting that shaped and finished out completely before putting the knife scales or the handle scales onto the knife. You, you notice that I did that as a as a pair when they're still bolted together so that they match up properly. Mixing up some two-ton epoxy here and coating the insides and, and the uh, countersink holes and some on the bolts so everything is held together well. Technically you probably don't even need epoxy when you're using bolt handle bolts. However, it does add a, a good amount of strength and perhaps more importantly keeps any moisture at all from getting in between the tang and the handle scales, if that happened, it, it would be very detrimental to the knife. 
And then once again, just as we had to shape the front of the scales completely before attaching them to the handle, we have to make sure that all the epoxy at that specific location that squeezes out is cleaned off because once it's set, there is no way to clean it off without really messing stuff up at that location. So get that ready to go. Put in the tempering oven, or excuse me, the, the toasting oven for a warming cycle, and that just accelerates the curing process on the epoxy and lets me work on the knife handle quicker. Uh, epoxy doesn't dry, it's a chemical process or a reaction that uh, cures, and so it's temperature sensitive. See, I'm just cleaning up all the way around the tang. That's everything matches up perfectly and getting the profile shape of the handle that I want. And then I'll start knocking off the quarters on the grinding belt to begin the contouring of the handle. I think it's a common uh, mistake or accident. I used to, I've done this a number of times to not knock enough of the corner off. Uh, beginner knife makers, it's easy to leave too much on there and end up with a rather square and blocky handle. Um, once you've kind of figured it out, though, it, it makes a lot of sense and the handles fit in your hand better and are just more comfortable. So, using the slack belt here to really refine those contours and that just helps with the whole process. And then of course finishing it out by hand sandpaper including the spine everything down to a fine grit. We'll put some Watco Danish oil on there. It seems to soak in pretty good on the desert ironwood whereas things like boiled linseed oil will not. So I use the Danish oil just a plain stuff no no stain. And there you have it the finished blade there. This is going to be the last knife that I make in Idaho for for a while, who knows how long, but I'm pretty happy how it turned out. It's going to go to a good home. I know it's going to get used out in the woods here and it's forged from some good Idaho sawmill blade steel. So it's a, a neat project. So appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you on the next video.